Welcome back children to chapter 7 human settlements part 1. In the previous lesson we have discussed about population composition. In this lesson our focus will be on human settlements. So we will discuss the various types of settlements meaning and nature of settlement in India and Brazil and as usual compare both the countries. Just like food and clothing, shelter is also a basic requirement of man. Since man is a social animal, he has always shown the tendency to live in groups. Human settlements emerge out of this tendency. The study of human settlements reflects human relationship with the environment. A human settlement is defined as a process of grouping of people and acquiring of some territory to build houses more or less permanently for economic support. In simple terms, a human settlement is a place where people live. Now settlements are, can be broadly classified into two types, rural and urban. The major difference between rural and urban areas is the function. Rural areas have predominantly primary activities like agriculture, whereas urban areas have domination of secondary and tertiary activities. Generally, the rural areas have low density of population than the urban areas. So these are the two major differences between rural and urban settlements. Now, let's understand what we mean by pattern. Okay, now pattern means a regular form or order in which a series of things occur. When we say settlement pattern, it strictly means spatial arrangement or distribution of settlements within a given area. Thus, a settlement pattern means shape of the villages and towns as seen from above or we could say when we see from, it's an aerial view. Refresh what we have learned in our lower classes. Okay, so there are three main types of settlements. The dispersed settle, uh, settlement, also known as scattered settlement. Then we have nucleated settlement or clustered settlement and we have linear settlements. So let's understand what do we mean by nucleated settlements. Now nu nucleated settlements are also known as clustered settlement or compact settlements. Now this is a picture of a nucleated settlement. Now if you see here there's a river flowing here okay and there are houses in the plains okay this land is pretty fertile and it's an agricultural a very good agricultural land. So if you see the houses are clustered or we could say they are grouped together. They are close to each other. We hardly see any distance between them. So this is a type of nucleated or clustered type of settlement. So let's understand what do we mean. So nucleated settlements are ones where the houses are grouped closely together often around an area where the land is fertile and good for agriculture or there are transport hubs, mining centers, commercial centers, etc. Besides these reasons, defense, health, education and other social or religious factors give rise to nucleated settlements. New settlements that are planned often have a nucleated pattern. Study linear settlements in detail. Now this is a picture of linear settlement. Okay, and if you see this is a road that is passing by and we have houses which are located along this road. Okay, so let's understand the meaning of linear settlement. A long and narrow settlement with houses 
spread out in a line along a road, railway, river, sea coast and in the foothill regions. These linear settlements are narrow in shape and they gradually grow in size. So if you see here, these settlements are narrow in shape and they are growing in size. Okay. And uh, this particular settlement is along a road. Let's quickly brush through scattered settlements. Okay, let's understand the meaning of scattered settlements. So houses or huts in this type of settlement are far away from one another. Generally, such settlements are found in the areas of high relief, dense forests, grasslands, hot deserts and extensive agricultural lands. Such areas show sparse population that is less population and the absence of proper roads. So if you see in this particular figure, we see that the houses are far away from each other. There are two, three houses here. There are two, three houses here. It could be a single house. Okay. And it is um, located on a high relief at a height. Now that we are clear with the concept of settlement patterns, let's quickly move on to page number 46 where they have given us two figures and they've asked some questions. Okay, the first question is identify the type of settlements. Now in the first figure, if we go to see figure 7.1a, this type of settlement, this type of settlement is a nucleated settlement now if you go to see okay it's around it could be a river or it could be a dam okay so this year we see many houses now since it's an aerial view the this particular figure is not very clearly shown in the textbook okay so these are the houses here they are not clear in your textbook okay but these are houses so this particular settlement we've already seen is called a nucleated settlement Okay, so we already know it is called as compact or clustered settlement. Now the next type of settlement is the dispersed settlement. Now in this figure, if you go to see here, okay, now this is a linear settlement. Okay, it's houses are along the road. Okay, they are in a line and they are along a road. So this type of settlement is a linear settlement. Okay, in this particular figure, we see two types of settlements. Here we see linear settlement and below if you go to see, we see dispersed settlement. The reason why it is dispersed is because the houses are far away. Okay, the, if you see the houses are far away from each other and that's the reason this particular settlement over here in this figure is known as a dispersed settlement. Now let's quickly move on to the next question which they have asked. Which one is a nucleated settlement and why? So we've already seen in the previous question, figure 7.1a represents a nucleated type of settlement. Now, why it is called a nucleated settlement? Okay, now we have to relate this to science. We all know the structure of an atom. An atom has nucleus in the center and the nucleus is surrounded by electrons and protons. So just as a nucleus is surrounded by electrons and protons, in a nucleated type of settlement, we have uh, maybe a river or a temple or a commercial center, okay, surrounded by several houses, okay, which are close to each other. And that's the reason this particular type of settlement has got, got its name as nucleated settlement. So figure 7.1a is a nucleated settlement because the houses are close to each other around a central point. Let's move on to the next question. 
which one is a dispersed settlement what could be the reason behind it now we already know the figure 7.1 b shows a dispersed kind of settlement now what is the reason behind it okay it is a dispersed settlement because the houses are spread over a large area so if you see this is a wide area and these and the houses are far away from one another the houses are far away from one another now we also see why it is called a dispersed settlement because um, such settlements are usually found in areas of high relief dense forests grasslands hot deserts cold deserts okay they are few in number okay they usually lack uh, adequate facilities they are close to nature and free of pollution now the other settlement that we see here is a linear settlement because the settlements have developed in a line along the road so if you see this is a road and they have developed in a line and they slowly they have slowly grown in size as well so we do we see two types of settlements in this figure linear settlement and dispersed settlement Let's move on to the next question where they have asked can you guess in which regions are these settlements that is the nucleated settlement and the dispersed settlements located in India now first let us study the nucleated settlements okay so we already know what are nucleated settlements nucleated settlements are found in both rural as well as urban areas now where in India we find them okay so nucleated settlements are found uh, in the plateau regions of narmada valley then paddy lands of bihar up that is uttar pradesh vindhyan plateau and several other cultivated parts of india in india dispersed settlements are found in the tribal parts covering central part of india eastern and southern rajasthan himalayan slopes and land with dissected and uneven topography that means dissected here means um, land maybe which is separated or divided by erosion or other factors now let's study the factors okay that influence the location of human settlements and variety of settlement patterns now there are three factors which influence the location and variety of settlement patterns they are physical cultural and economic factors so under physical factors we have the physiography of that place the type of land and soil climate water supply and river banks under cultural factors we have the defense health education tourism and historical significance under economic factors we have irrigation occupations transport and communications industries trade and government offices with this children we have come to an end of our today's session hope you have understood thank you stay home stay safe